Argus is a completely browser-based collection management system. You can access Argus from any browser on any computer or device. As long as you do not um, limit access, your staff will be able to work remotely in your collection management system. Argus has a very um, robust and intuitive um, search capability. It gives you the ability to search on every single field in your object records. So for here, if we wanted to search on keyword paint, we can just type in paint and it brings back all of the object records where paint is located somewhere in your object record, whether that's in the title, the object name, whether it's in the curator's remarks, those objects will come up. We can, um, you have a number of different options for searching. We have our Boolean search, our advanced, our command, and our save searches in addition to the uh, basic search that we just saw. You also have the ability to create save lists and save searches that can be shared with your colleagues. So for example, if you did this search on paint and you wanted to save that as a search, you simply click on the save search link. It gives you a save icon and then you're able to save that search to um, work with later on. What you can also do is if you decided to save certain records as a list, you have the save list option. So if we decided to select a few of these um, records here on the list that we've been working on. We can put little check marks next to them and then we can click on save list option and you can decide whether or not you want to create a new save list out of the records in your search results or add to an existing save list um, that you can access by clicking select and accessing those ones there. It is a, Argus does have an easy to use interface that can be configured for different groups of users. So um, let's take a look at a, at a record and we can see um, what this looks like. So I'm currently logged in as an administrator. And when I search for a, a, a particular object, we can uh, click into it and see the details of that record. So as the administrator, I might have the same um, rights and permissions as say your registrar, your collection manager, uh, perhaps your curators might have. And so I have full access to all of the information in the object record. Um, you can also have other users with access to the system. So we'll log in as Robert, and Robert is a read-only user. Okay, so here we are as Robert, and we're going to search for that same object record that we were looking at. Now Robert, um, when he clicks into the object record, he sees the same object record but a different view of it. Um, so he only has read-only access, so he does not have an edit option on the toolbar. When he's viewing the record, he sees the information that is made available to him, um, and then he can, he can view that information. You can also have other users with more limited access, those who are responsible for maybe editing certain portions of the record, um, but has a little more access um, than your read-only users might. So now we're logged in as a volunteer. In this scenario, the volunteer um, has access to um, search and also to edit, but not to add or delete. So here we are, we're going to take a look at the same object record. So you can see that the volunteer has a slightly different view of their search results than the administrator did, um, as well as the, um, the read-only user. So we're going to click into the same object record that we saw earlier. So here's our object record. It displays some information across the top. It actually is a, a slightly different um, no, maybe it's the same. It's the same um, view record as uh, what the read-only user had and um, a different view than what the administrator has. So here we are back as the volunteer and that volunteer has edit rights. So we can click on the edit screen and it takes us into the edit screen for the volunteer. So in the object record, we still have um, access to all the information that we've given the volunteer. You notice that the volunteer does not have the different tabs of information across the top. 
um, unlike the administrator. Um, and then there's also only a couple of fields here um, that are available for editing. So when the volunteer clicks into these fields, they can edit the data. So these may be the only fields that the, vol that the um, volunteer may be responsible for researching and then updating. Um, you can also add help text anywhere onto your screen. So here we have a little bit of help text here, but it can be added on anywhere on your screen to assist your users in, in doing their data entry. So speaking of data entry, um, we can also have in Argus custom data entry forms. So we'll go back to our um, administrator login. Um, when you are adding a brand new record, you simply need to click on the add option on the toolbar. When you click on the add option on the toolbar, it takes you into an empty data entry screen, uh, an empty data entry form. Now it has all the different tabs of information across the top that you might want to track. Um, when you click on the collection and select um, an option from the collection drop-down list, it will give you a form that is going to be unique to that type of object. So if you were wanting to add something to your fine art collection, you would select fine art from the collection dropdown and it will give you a form that is unique to a fine art object. So for example, here we have um, fields such as medium, title, artist maker, subject style, um, but then if we uh, wanted to add something to a different collection, so say paleontology, we can choose for contrast. When we choose paleontology, the screen refreshes again and gone are the fields for title artist maker, but instead we have fields for common name and scientific name for period and storage age. And so you can have very different data entry forms depending on um, what it is you're adding to the collection. In the same way, if you were adding some um, an activity to your um, to your uh, collection management system. So say you were adding um, an accession record to your collection management system. When you select a session um, from the activity type dropdown, it gives you a data entry form that might be specific to um, when you're adding as in a session record. So you have some very specific fields that come up. You have some title and possession fields down here at the bottom. On the acquisition tab, you can record um, if a collection came in or the justification for, for accepting the collection and so forth. Now, if you were adding, um, say you were adding an exhibition, when you go to add an exhibition, the screen refreshes again and you can have some very unique um, fields specific to an exhibition project. So for the exhibition, you can have your exhibition detail fields, you can track um, your exhibition management. So you see here we have some sub tabs for tracking the team, for tracking your meetings, your deliverables, your installation dates, your deinstallation dates. So it's very customizable depending on what it is you're needing to do. Um, in the same um, way, you can also um, have a um, public facing um, portal, which is part and parcel of the Argus uh, collection management system. You can make your collection virtually available to anyone in the world with Argus's portal feature. Uh, most institutions we work with do use this for um, making all or parts of their collection available to members of the public, um, but there are some institutions that also use the Argus portal for internal access, um, for read-only access to their collection management system. Because you can have more than one portal with Argus, you can use it uh, in as many ways as you need to. So you could have one that shows less information than what your administrators might have in your collection management system for those internal users. And then you can also have public facing portals as well. So the, um, the public portal allows your students and researchers to continue having, um, having search access to the parts of the collection that you choose to make available. So here um, we have a keyword search 
on the advanced search um, tab if you wanted to make this available. Um, your researchers and students would probably appreciate it. You pick and choose the fields you want to make available to, um, to the portal um, and you choose the order and of course you choose the, the search type that is then available. You can also allow your visitors to connect with you uh, virtually to, um, to ask questions. So we have a submit request option here on the toolbar where visitors can ask questions when they are in an object record. So if we click into an object record, um, you can also allow um, visitors to ask questions about specific objects. Um, and you can um, also allow visitors to contribute information to any of your object records. So by selecting and creating a form, um, you can collect information from your community about objects that may, they may have information on or, um, or they may simply want to comment or um, help with any uh, social tagging that you choose to allow them to do. And this information will go into the database, into the object record. And when you choose, um, you can choose to make that information available through the public portal. So it uh, stays private until you until you have a chance to vet it and decide to, to display it. The uh, on exhibition tab that we happen to be on right now um, is a, uh, a view of some of the object records based on the current location. Um, but with the portal, you also have the ability to create virtual exhibitions for your visitors to um, to view um, those visitors who may be unable to visit you in person, either because of the current situation or because they happen to be across the world and, and, and don't have the opportunity to come and visit you. So you can make it very easy for your visitors to share objects at your museum. Um, you can um, also um, make um, some social media options available so that your visitors can share objects at your museum on social media um, as, as well.